Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Project Ozone 3, Kappa Mode. How are you guys doing today? How's life? And although nobody cares, my life is also fine. Thank you. Anyhow, it seems that we can start today's episode by making the creative tank. Cause I think we have everything. And just to refresh your memory, the problem that we have with the creative tank is the infinity tank. Because it is going to require blood tank tier 16 and it's going to require almost 600,000 blank ruins. Cause you literally need two of the previous tier in order to make the higher tier. So it's a crazy recipe. But I already ordered a bunch of tier 14 blood tanks and I think if this crafting recipe is done, we should be able to make it. Cause the thing is we only need one because the infinity tank has EMC. And unfortunately the recipes are so complicated that you have to order them one by one. Cause for instance, if I order three tier 14s, there are no CPUs available. So those guys probably need an upgrade, but uh, yeah, we can do it one by one. Another issue that we might have is the neutral steel of the 11th degree, which is the highest degree. And we don't have it yet, but we should see how much of the 10th we have. Oh, we have only 27. That's nine of the 11. That's not very good. Why aren't you working? Yeah, I disconnected tier seven because I needed a bunch of tier six. So we remove you, we add you here. And now you should be fine. I think that should be more than enough in order to make like 20 tier 11, I hope. Because we have 1600 of them, so it should be fine. While the blood tank is being prepared, maybe we should work on the other recipes. For instance, we are going to need vacuum fluid input and output hatches. Yeah, I just checked, all of them are the same. And they do have EMC, so we only need one. And thankfully, we already have a lower tier one, so we just have to upgrade them, I guess. Modularium also has EMC, which is very good. And one thing that we're always short on is chests and hoppers we're fine. So big goes to huge, huge goes to ludicrous, and ludicrous goes to vacuum. Now that we have the vacuum fluid inputs and outputs, we need you. Oh, you need capacitors. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are going to make five stacks for now. Do you have pressure? Yes. And I think that should be enough for the start. Unfortunately, the capacitor and the transistor from pneumatic craft, which we needed in a lot of recipes, do not have EMC. And we only had five left. Although, I just noticed that we have these guys and they have EMC. Yes, exactly. I just EMC'd a bunch of stuff and I think we should be able to make 100. And we already have two blood tanks tier 14. Can we make the 16th one? Yes. Haha. <laughs> it's going to take a while because that was like 25% of the recipe. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you blood tank tier 16. And are you sure you're not a quest? Because I think you should be. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, with our blood tank tier 16, we should be able to make the infinity tank. And that one is a quest. We're gonna teach it to you and we're going to take two stacks, three. And that goes in the recipe. Oh, and by the way, we could have gotten the infinity tank by using the Tome of Knowledge, but unfortunately, since the update, the recipe for it was changed and I did not have the material to make it. I have it now, but it's still a very complicated recipe and it's going to require neutral steel of the 11th degree anyways. And we were not there yet. Actually, we can put you back because we don't need you anymore. So do you guys remember that we had 1600 of the neutral steel of the 6th degree? That only gave us 23 neutral steel of the 10th degree. Yeah. But in order to make the 11th degree, we're going to need oxygen and kerosene. I have a drum of kerosene over here, but I'm actually very scared if it falls into the void. Because if it does, I'm screwed. Can we just right click with you? Yes. That's one bucket. Fill it in. No. <laughs> How much it's going to require? It's saying 100 millibuckets of kerosene and 200 millibuckets of oxygen. So that should be more than enough. The question is, where are we producing oxygen? Yeah, I think we can steal some from here. Oh, that's not good. Yes, it did connect to that guy, but it is fine because we're getting oxygen anyway. And that should be enough. We do not have any RF issues, but someone told me that if you add a lot of speed upgrades to the PRC, it's going to consume a lot of RF. So I just put four and I don't think you will accept the gas upgrade. Yeah, I thought so. So we're going to tell you to accept fluids from the back, gases from the side, and the rest is manual. And you should be on output on. So if we put it in, nothing happens. Do you need like three? You don't accept speed upgrades? I don't know. Yes, it does work. It's just incredibly slow. Okay, that could take some time. Can I give you one speed upgrade? Yes, I can. Can I give you two? What if we hook you up to a quantum entangle porter? Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, you cannot put more than two speed upgrades inside, otherwise, this guy will not work. And it's slow, we have to make our peace with it. We are almost there, yes. 
we have 16. And you might be wondering, Lush, why do you need 16? Because you only need two in order to make the creative tank. I will show you in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the creative tank. Oh, that was extra. And that is a quest. But did you know that one creative tank in Kappa mode is useless? So we're going to have one more. And obviously, one more and more. And I'm not going to bore you to death. I have four more over here. And that is eight creative tanks. The thing is, we are actually going to use most of them in order to automate stuff and in order to reduce lag. For instance, those towers that you see in front of you should be removed as soon as possible. Because I don't know, this is like 32 machines. That's like 64 machines. That's 100 machines working all at the same time. And it's not very good. Also, we have a stupid lava generator over here, which is causing a lot of lag. The problem is I don't even remember why we need lava, but I do know that it's functioning. So something is using it. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we're going to replace this with a creative tank as well. Another incredibly important point is that we're going to consume like six or seven of them but we need eight in order to make the chaos planks. So I have 10 more over here for that recipe. And the reason that this guy is incomplete is because we're missing the 11th degree neutral steel, which is being prepared. Yeah, we ran out. <laughs> okay. I think we should first start by removing this tower. We have 64 magma crucibles, 48 of them are making blazing pyrotium, and 16 of them are making jellied cryotium, which we're actually using them over here in order to make neutral steel of the first degree and the second degree. But before we tear it down, we're going to need one bucket so that I can fill in the creative tank. Very good. We can remove it. I mean, since we have creative tanks, I can trash these, right? Because we don't need them. Removing conduits is the worst. I know you can use a wrench, but I think that will take longer. Uh oh, that's a mess. One stack of machines removed. I think instead of using an ender tank everywhere, we can just use an ultimate mechanical pipe and hook it up directly to the creative tank, right? So we put you to extract and then we add blazing pyrotium. I just accidentally right clicked. It's okay. We can empty that. So I would like to make another reminder again. We're going to need 1,500 neutral steel of the 10th degree. So if we have these guys set on 50,000, that's nothing. We're going to go as high as 100,000. Oh, and by the way, when you have the creative tank from mechanism, you cannot just change the fluid with a bucket. What you have to do is basically put it in a fluid transposer, which has the fluid that you want. For instance, we have jellied cryotium over here and it will change it for you. Because I remember that with the thermal expansion version, you could just right click with a bucket. And in Enigmatica 2, I had a lot of problems figuring that out. So we do the same for jellied cryotium. So this is first degree and the second. And it's actually working much faster. Huh. The thing is, we also need to do the same for aerotium. And I think even though this guy is a gas, it's actually a fluid. Yes. I just replaced every single magma crucible that we had for the first, second, third and fourth degree neutral steel with creative tanks because we needed blazing pyrotium, jellied cryotium, aerotium and petrotium. But then something hit me. In order to make a neutral steel of the first degree, you are going to need one draconium ingot. Easy peasy and it's relatively fast. But when you get to the second degree, you're going to need three of them. When you get to the third one, you're going to need nine. And by the time you get to the fourth one, you're going to need 27. Basically what all of that means is that by the time you get to the 10th degree, you're going to need three by the power of nine draconium ingots. And that's a crazy number. And just to put things into perspective, for the first one, we need one, then three, nine, 27, 81, 243, 729, 2000, 6000, and almost 20,000. And I'm not sure how many Chaos Catalysts we're going to need in order to complete the quest and get the creative chest, but I would assume that 1,400 is a fair estimation. And for that, we're going to need 27 million. We are screwed. Completely. And it's not just the 27.5 million Draconium ingots. They have to be processed at an insane speed. Because otherwise, we will never get the 10th degree in time. We need 1,400 of them, at least. And I think what we have to do is that we're going to remove this tower and we're going to replace it with another one. All of that being said, our solution is extremely easy to implement. I just hooked up our ender tank for essence to a creative tank, so we don't need the tower anymore. And I can just rip it off. I had so much magma crucibles. It's ridiculous. The tower has been removed and instead of this tower, we're going to have 80 fluid transposers. Also, a few episodes ago, someone was asking me, where do you store all of your items in the ME system? Where are the drives? They're everywhere. Here, here, 
over there and over there and even down here and the reason that i have so many of them is because i cannot use extra cells because it crashes my game so these are all 64ks you know some old ones could be like 1k 4k or 16k but the brand new ones are all 64 I think. We also need to increase the production of draconium. So we're going to remove the redstone because I have like 13 million of it. And also you guys. And we're going to have draconium. I was going to say that I forgot to bring one draconium seed, but it's okay. We had one over here. We just hooked them up to power and the pattern seems to be the same. So we're good. And this is the speed that we're gaining draconium ingots, which is not that bad. Another very important thing that I forgot is that we don't need blank ruins anymore, so we can replace them with obsidian. That's not obsidian. Okay, I messed them up. You are obsidian, you are obsidian, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I can remove these guys as well, right? Also, we have 111,000 infinity blocks. So we don't need them as well. And over here, I actually ran out of channels. I hooked up every single spawner to RF and now we're also generating a crazy amount of EMC. It's the 8 times compressed obsidian. Cause the thing is, now that we're trying to get the creative chest, we're going to need a lot of these colossal stars. So we need to EMC them. And they are expensive. So are we gaining or are we losing? Oh, we're gaining EMC. That's nice. Yeah, but not by much. Every problem in this world can be solved by more export buses. You export it too. So you should be very fast. Eh, <laughs> it's not the worst. And just as a very small reminder to you, we're going to need the Colossal Star Omega in order to make the final star short, and we need two of them per each Chaos Plank. And this is the speed that we're losing EMC. That's not good. But there's nothing I can do about it, and for the moment, we actually don't need EMC for anything else, so we might as well consume everything. I think what we're going to do is that we're going to have 54 fluid transposers in order to make the neutral steel of the first degree. Then we are going to have 18 for the second, 6 for the third, and 2 for the fourth. And I think that would be efficient because anything more than that will be just crazy. In any case, let me put the fluid transposers, then I'll be right back. So this might be a very weird way of doing this, but we have 48 of the fluid transposers here, which are going to be used for blazing pyrotium, and the remaining 6 will be up here. Now we need to provide them with RF as well as draconium. So let's figure out the draconium first. And for that, we're going to use a purple ender chest, obviously. So our ME system is going to fill in this ender chest with draconium. And there is a skeleton and a zombie. And I think for each of the two columns, we're going to have one ender chest and that should be more than enough. We give you speed upgrades and round robin. And then I have to configure these guys. Ooh. And just in case I don't get confused, we're going to extract on purple and we're going to insert on purple so that we will know this is for draconium. So all of these guys will get draconium and you are not getting pyrotium. Why? Ah, so this might look like something incredibly complicated to some of you guys, but trust me, it's actually not. It's just a weird way of cabling stuff because I'm actually tired of our base. Everything looks garbage. And I thought, let's make an actual tower. <laughs> anyway, the way this is going to work is that I have color coded every single conduit. So we have insert on purple for here because draconium is purple. Then we have extract on light blue because cryotium is light blue. So we have insert on light blue and we have extract on light gray because I did not know what is the color of a rotium. <laughs> but over here you can see that it's import on light gray and export on brown which is the color of petrotium. So that's basically it. It's nothing very complicated. It's just a stupid way of wiring everything. I hate it when your Emmy jumps like this. <laughs> we're out of obsidian but it's okay. So now that we're out of obsidian we had like 2 million blocks of obsidian. How many of you do we have? That's not bad. Yeah, actually it's not that bad because with these we can make two additional final star shards. It's really good. And I know I say this every single time that I make a tower of thermal expansion machines, but if you want to copy and paste the settings of your machines, you can use a red print. You just right click and then right click. So it copies the setting for the first machine and it reconfigures the other ones. Unfortunately, you can only use it once and then for new machines, you have to make another one. But it's extremely cheap, so who cares? I think everything is now configured. So what I have to do is to just connect the item conduits. And I think the best solution is that we just make a line in the center. So if I did not mess anything up, you're getting the neutral steel of the first degree and now you need RF. Exactly, the color coding works. We're getting the first degree, the second over here, and then we're getting the third one over here and the fourth one goes over here. 
like so. Of course, it's incredibly slow because now we have to upgrade every single machine and we're going to need much more than 34 kits. I upgraded every single machine to resonant, I gave them the full augments and this is how fast we are gaining neutral steel of the fourth degree which is not that bad actually. So that means that our alloy smelter, which is making the fifth one, is almost working constantly, but almost. The thing is by the time we reach the sixth, this is the speed. And you know, it gets much worse over time because you need more and more and more. But I don't think we need to go bigger than that because that's already a lot, that's 80 machines. For the moment we have only 26 of the 10th degree, but as long as it's working faster than the singularities, which we have 61, I'll be okay. Uh, we have to give it time to catch up because we literally just set this thing up and the singularities have been running for hours and hours and hours. Also, I would like to mention a few points. One of them is, the top comment on the previous episode is that Lush, did you know that if you capture a husk, give him an item, put him in a mob imprisonment tool and duplicate him, he will have that item in his hand. So basically what that means is that today I can make a chaos catalyst. I can give it to a husk, get 1000 of them and make all the chaos planks that we need. We did this already in normal mode, but this is Kappa mode, so for me it's a personal thing. I, I don't want to go that way. At least not until I get the first Chaos Plank. Because if I make it, I make it. If I don't, it's a failure and it's fine. Another question that I get frequently is that why don't you just animate a Chaos Plank? Because you cannot put them down. Sounds like anvils when placed. It basically, it means that it's going to explode. Another question was, why don't you animate a Chaos Catalyst? You cannot animate items which you cannot place down. So you can only animate blocks. Also, another very smart suggestion was that instead of using a creative cobblestone generator, I should use a water tank and just export water into the matter condensers from Applied Energy Sticks 2 because it will be much faster. That's actually a very smart idea, but we have a slight problem. Because our mob farm has been running for hours and hours and we only have 62 of the Awakened Draconium Singularity. But our matter condensers have been running for far less time and we already have 500 of them, almost. So basically what that means is that we can improve the engine of our car to go 500 kilometers per hour, but we are stuck in traffic and it's not going away. So I just went into a parallel universe and tried to put down a chaos plank to see if you can animate it or not, just to make sure. It does not explode when you put it down, but you cannot animate it. So yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna work. Anyhow, we have a lot of colossal stars and we can add them to our transmutation table. That is 15.5 quadrillion EMC. How many of you can we make? Four. And considering that we need two per chaos plank, we're 25% there. Okay, that, that's actually moving faster than I thought. Also, this guy is working relatively okay. Uh, there is a slight problem because it seems that the processing time between these guys, which are making the first degree, is different from the ones who make the second one. Or maybe I didn't hook them up. How do you get in? <laughs> that's the problem. There is something called Ender Pearl. Yes. Yeah, I thought I did something wrong. <laughs> they don't have RF. So this is why this guy was not balanced the entire time. So essentially, now this guy works fine. But since we had these flow transposers over here, I also hooked them up to an ender tank and they're also making us neutral steel. And I just noticed we're out of draconium. What? Are you not making that for me? Oh, you need eight essence for one ingot. Uh oh. That's not very good. They are 10, 10, 10, and they do have an imaginary time block, but that's not enough. So we're gonna add four more over here, and then I'm not sure, should I add more over here? A few minutes ago, we had 10,000 draconium, and right now, we have nothing. That's how fast we're using them. All of them are 10, 10, 10, and all of them are affected by an imaginary time block. Are we gaining draconium? No. We can't be consuming that much. This used to be our diamond farm over here and we don't use diamonds anymore, so I might as well just change it for draconium. It doesn't have EMC, no, okay. You know, I just remembered that we have a hoe here and we're going to use this one. Yes, much better. You have 12 channels left, that is very good. We just plant you and it's everywhere. You're harvesting, right? Oh, it's not keeping up. So we're going to replace the item conduit with translocators. And that should be faster? Yes. So this one is not incredibly efficient, but are we gaining draconium? 
new. So for those of you who don't know, this was actually a very stupid move, this thing that you see in front of you, because the way that a harvester from industrial foregoing works is that it will harvest this plant, then this one, then this one, this one, and then, you know, it goes in a pattern. But the thing is, when you're using imaginary time blocks, that means that by the time the plant gatherer reaches the second plant, the first one is already grown, so we're wasting everything. The best way to set these guys up with an imaginary time block is that you remove the range add-on. So it will only harvest this one, which is in front of it. And it's doing it super fast, which is basically the setup that we have over here. So I have to extend it. Why are you here? Are you a bad sheep? Yes. So I'm just going to extend this by eight more blocks. And I think that should be more than enough. I hope. Can you make me 16 plant gatherers? No. Heavy tungsten plate. And you do not have EMC. <laughs> okay. And I can only make you in a hydraulic press, which I dismantled. Nice. Uh, I'll be right back, I guess. Okay, so we have our 16 harvesters and we have 16 new plants and all of them are working at maximum efficiency. The setup over here is very different from the one over there because we only have one compactor. And the reason for that is very simple. In the past, I used to have different crops over here, so I needed different compactors. Now we only have one crop, so one compactor is more than enough. And this is how fast we're gaining draconium ingots and we almost have 44,000. You might be thinking to yourself that 44,000 is a lot and I'm overdoing it, but I would like to remind you, we need 27 million. So this small bit, that half a million that you see over there, we have 10% of that. <laughs> That's horrible. I know. Out of the recipe that you see in front of you, there are a lot of items which do not have EMC and we don't have them and they're going to take a long time to make. One of them is the flame barrier from embers, which is going to require us to automate the exchange tablet, which is not going to be that difficult considering it only requires two aspects. So it should not be that bad. The other one is Naga scales. So we need to make a wood farm, I think. Another item which is going to take a long time to make is the ethereal slate from blood magic. It's not going to be a huge problem for us because we have creative tank and we can provide our blood altar with unlimited life points. It's just time consuming. The rest of the items either have EMC or we already have them. Just as an example, we already have the brown plastic or the fading matter and even the fury blocks. We have 640 of them left in our ME system, but those are the things that we have to figure out next episode because I think it's also a good time to wrap up this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.